Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Booking Magnet Magic. <laughs> you know, I got to say it like that just because it's a magical thing. Oh, this series has been so juicy. If you missed any part of it, you're going to want to catch up and catch the entire series. Today, I am pleased to introduce you to Lenny D. Thomas. He is an amazing actor. He's affectionately known as Lenny, also one of our my, my New York brothers from, from New York City. And, you know, I had the opportunity to coach Lenny a bit back in the day, you know, because he was making that transition from theater to film and television. And when I tell you, he has just skyrocketed. I can't take credit for any of that, but what I can say is he is a force and his energy is so magnetic. So he was the perfect guest to have on the show. You'll recognize him as his, from his current series regular role in BET's Ruthless. And uh, yeah, you're going to enjoy this conversation. If you need a jolt of energy and a jolt of get it togetherness going on for you, <laughs> you're going to enjoy this interview. So check it out now with Letty D. Thomas. Lenny D. Thomas. Do you really go by Lenny D? You go by Lenny D in the credits, or is it Lenny Thomas? No, it, it, for most projects, it is it is Lenny D. Thomas. It is Lenny yeah. D. There was someone yeah. else I interviewed, and I was like, I was like, oh, you got a middle. Okay, let me say the middle. Let me say it correctly. <laughs> Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. I know it is a at the time of this recording, y'all. It is a Sunday morning. Lenny has just <laughs> completed a how many days shoot with Mr. Tyler Perry? Eight days, 22 episodes shoot. Eight days, 22 episodes, because Mr. Tyler Perry does not do things like everybody else. He doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> he just, where are we going? Where are we going? I, so I need y'all to just <laughs> absorb that what I just said for a second. Eight days, 22 episodes. So yeah. I told Lenny, we're not going to be long. We're going to get to this so he can take a nap and just woosah. Give yourself a congratulations. Like, how, how do you, like... Give yourself a, oh, I got through it. I can, I did that. Like, how do you, what does that look like for Lenny? It's, it's, you know, a piece of it is what you just did. The, oh, you literally pat yourself on the back. Like, I'm like, wait, I just did that. Oh, snap. I'm still here. I'm right. still sane. You know, it's, it, it takes weeks really to recover from what we do. Cause we put, like, we concentrate so much energy and, and, just focus into doing this thing. And then yeah. all of a sudden it's over. Yeah. And it's like, you, you literally feel like a fish out of water or like you just fell out the sky. And you're like, all right, right. <laughs> what am I supposed to do now? It's, yeah. Yeah. it's so it, interesting. I was just talking to another actor yesterday, um, Tawana Floyd, who's going to be on this uh, podcast series. And I was telling her about it, an old podcast I did about a grieving period. And I don't know yes. if you experienced that. But, you know, a lot of times doing theater, I used to go through that a lot. But I think about like even TV shows, like we're forced to bond quickly. We got to bond quickly because we got to be on screen together and we got to look gelled and cohesive. But even now that I even think about how Mr. Tyler Perry works, where you all like really are in an incubator for a very yeah. short time doing a whole lot of work. And like you said, then it's like, OK, peace, you're wrapped. <laughs> exactly. Those were, you know you miss people you miss the relationships you miss yeah. the bond like how how do you I know this that wasn't even one of my planned questions but <laughs> even from the past couple of seasons of the show by the way is Ruthless on uh BT plus or Paramount yes. plus BT plus mm -hmm. so how have you worked that for yourself for your mindset after it's it's that band-aid ripped away we my cast we we are obsessed with each other. We need each other. We are each other's lifelines. We try to stick around for each other for as long as we can until we have to go back to our lives. Like right, even right now, I have some of them staying with me in my spot. Like we hang out every single day during and after the shoot. And we help each other come back to earth from this project. And that's 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 what it's always been. You this this cast that I'm working with, I mean. <laughs> I'm gonna be heartbroken when this show is done. Cause they're, you know, just like with theater, like you were talking about, like all of a sudden, all this, this labor of love that you've been pouring so much of yourself into is done. And it's like a piece of you is gone, yeah. right? So, you know, every season we get better at like allowing ourselves the grace to become, to go back to normal, right? Mm -hmm. And it's it literally, we, we're like this incubator uh, group of, of people, we just, we can't get enough of each other and we love on each other so hard 
the the the, the subject matter of the show, like it requires us to become fast friends. You know what yeah. I mean? It's it's a crazy ass show. Mm-hmm. So if I don't feel like I trust you and vice versa, we're not going to be read properly on screen. We're not going to give Tyler what he wants. We're not going to show up fully. But because we pour into each other, it's it's slowly becoming easier to, you know, return back to one after the season is done. This has been the easiest uh, return back to one, but this was the hardest season to shoot so far. Again, every single season gets harder. <laughs> but I feel like we're doing it right now. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I love that. That's so, thank you for sharing that. And I'm sure those of you watching at home, probably nodding your head. Like I don't, enough people don't talk about that. Like for me, acting is so spiritual. It's, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. if you're really present, it is your characters. It, it becomes a part of you and when you're part of an ensemble. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, it's a higher level of trust. Cause even like, even if you do go up on a line or something's like you got to, you're trusting that someone got you. It's like that trust. Yes, yes you know? exactly. Exactly. You know? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, you know, we we jumped into the present. Let's go back to young Lenny. When young Lenny was a young whippersnapper, where are you from? How did you even get into performing? Because I mean, you're very multi-talented. You have so many things you're great at. So tell, take us back. Um, I was always a fan of my, my, my uncles and my grandfather. They were just masterful storytellers. They could just captivate people and, and tell stories like you li- hours could pass by and they'd still be talking you know what I mean you might not have said a word but they're still going and you're still just there just you know what I mean and and the, the details they remember it was just so from them I think is where the performer in me was born right because I love holding someone's attention I love entertaining someone I love getting that energy from them and it wasn't until uh, high school that like someone pulled me to the side after seeing me in a play. And, was and where like, did you grow up? Where did you grow up? I grew up in Queens, Jamaica, okay. Queens. Okay. Yeah, New York. And um, I always went to school in Manhattan. Manhattan had better schools than, than mm-hmm. Queens did, you know. And it was my mother being her beautifully overprotective self. Like, no, nope, you're not going to go through the same thing I went through when I was your age. So, boom. <laughs> I need y'all close by me also. You see, you worked, she only worked like maybe a few miles away uh, okay. from wherever I went to school. Yeah. But, um. So yeah, my my one of my English teachers in my senior year pulled me to the side after seeing me in a play, saying, "You need to do this. You were the only one up there who took this seriously, mm-hmm. and you have something special." No one has ever said something that poignant to me at that point in my life, and then just I just kept believing it and kept taking little steps towards it. As much as I didn't really believe it myself, I felt something, but I'm like, I don't know if this is for me. I don't know if this is for me because it's just the why can't I? You know that mindset that scarcity mindset that I finally let go of. I, I let go of it through exploring acting. I let go of it through believing the people who believed in me, right? And it led me to the name of the Playhouse, which I literally like reinvented myself through uh, acting technique, miser technique, right? And then I'm like, oh, this, I must be good at it. If I'm, you know, I keep hearing the same thing over and over and over again, I get better at it. I feel great about this. Why not me? Mm-hmm. Why not me? Why not me? Why not me? And then, boom, play here, short film there, bump it up. It just kept the exponential growth started happening. We're exponential growers as human beings. Mm-hmm. And it was every situation I found myself was yes and, yes and, yes and, which is, you know, what uh, improv is based off of, what acting essentially is based off of, what I feel like the key to life is, whether it's good or bad, yes and, it's mm-hmm. for you. It's whatever is happening in your life, it's happening for you. No matter how crazy it feels or looks, no matter how bad you feel about it or good you feel about it, this is happening for you. And also this too shall pass. Right. You know what I mean? Surrendering to that has has helped me sustain the life that I'm in right now. Surrendering to that. Like, brand is due on this acting game every single day. Right. right? I didn't want to put that in my mind for years because I'm like, no, I'm, you know, I just didn't want to deal with the business side of it. But you can't, you can't have the yin without the yang, fam. <laughs> you can't reinvent the wheel. Mm-hmm. So the second you, you know, start schooling yourself into what you need to do every single day, baby steps become giant leaps. You know what I mean? Eventually, to go from what? Not paying jobs to making hundreds of thousands of dollars. What? <laughs> right? I never got into this game for the money. And I, to this day, I said, I, I'd be doing this 
for the rest of my life for free if I had to. That's how much I love it. But the universe rewarded me mm -hmm. in other ways. Now I have different ways to show up for myself and other people. Like, and it just keeps expanding. Now I'm, I'm starting to produce my own stuff. I'm starting to direct. I'm starting to write. Yeah. 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 Okay. Leverage. Keep leveraging it and shining yeah. it and exploring. You know, you also did, you know, like you said, what I love about your story is you, you were open to everything. Theater, short films, all the things, you know, and and to watch you really watching you just keep really keep getting better and better is really fun. Is really fun to see when you were younger and you would watch actors, artists on TV, on stage. Like what who were some of the people, if you can remember, who really captivated you? And if not the exact name, what was it about these performers that made you like lean in? What did they possess to you? What 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 did you get from them? I have one for film, I have one for theater. Um or I'm starting theater because that's my training. That's that's my first love. I got to see Ron Cephas Jones in a play, and oh my gosh, there's just, he the, his presence just blew my mind. It was I just, just didn't understand it. It was like almost like watching a magic show, and it wasn't the show wasn't about magic, but it just felt magical. Yeah, uh, and I remember specifically thinking, like. I want to, what does that feel like? I want to know what that feels like. That looks like he's having so much fun up there, even though he was playing a dark character. He looked like he was having a blast. How could you not? Would he see the life that's happening up there? That man is having a blast. It just blew my mind that, that someone can get paid to do something like that and make a living out of that. And then the, the only man that, that, what'd you call it, that solidifies this hunger of mine for acting is Denzel Washington. Mm -hmm. I got to see him in a million movies. And then I got to see him live in Fences, same thing, theatrical performances. The mm. second he stepped out on stage, his aura filled the entire yeah. space. Yeah. I'm like, I couldn't sit down <laughs> for the whole show. I'm like, what is, yo, I don't want to miss a second. I'm literally studying every single movement this man made. I'm like, everything he's doing is on purpose. Everything. Mm -hmm. That kind of attention to detail and, and <laughs> intention. Mm -hmm. I want that so bad. So bad. It was, and these, you know, these guys have been affirmations. You know what I mean? <laughs> Seriously, there was another. Uh, then I've never been a musical theater fan uh, up until certain shows, like The Lion King was the number, the, the first musical I think I ever saw. And if, if anyone has seen The Lion King, you know how magical that thing is. Like I cry every time I see that too. Yeah, every so time bad. I see that, it just, it's like a, it's a beautiful release, a celebration of life. It's how can you not let yourself go through whatever the emotions are? Second favorite ha um, um, musical is Hamilton. But both of those shows, right? And Hamilton is, oh my gosh. Yeah. Another one, another one. Every time I watch Hamilton, I'm going to cry. You, watch, you watch Hamilton with a stank face. Just... You know what I'm saying? Just, mm, <laughs> mm, just mm. What? You said what? Mm, you heard that? <laughs> you hear that rhythm? What are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, it's a stank face show. You got you to gotta massage your face when you yeah, go. Yeah, you're like, wait, I'm, uh, I'm stuck. I'm just walking like this. What's going on? <laughs> but it's the magic that these performances, these productions, like, create and remind you that you are magic. You literally are that. Mm -hmm. This is not this is not some esoteric thing. We all have access to it. You just have to find out your version of that. Yeah. And that, oh, gosh, that reminder keeps me going. Yeah, I watch Hamilton all the time. Like if I need to, if I just need to to, to feel something, you know, uh, inexcusable or, or undeniable, I'll throw that on, and I'll I know yes. all the words to all the songs now. Listen, <laughs> if I need to pick me up, let me. I if I need to feel some confidence, I have a whole playlist for confidence and <laughs> yeah. up. But that whole Leslie Odom Jr. The Room Where It Happened, mm. I need to see mm. him. I love I'm, when when it came on Disney Plus. The way that man serves. Yes, up. he. Dang. Oh my gosh. And just oh, if that's it's moments like that that make me miss being on. I do not miss doing eight shows a week. Let's be clear. <laughs> right now, at this stage of my life, at this stage, I think I won't have it again. But oh, it's just the power that we have through our art and how we yes. can people you know on that same vein what do you know for sure what does Lenny 
know for sure is the thing that makes you magical. When you walk in a room, when you step on a set, what is the mm-hmm. thing that no one has to confirm for you? No one has to confirm. I'll be out in a second, y'all. That's my cast. That's my cast. I love y'all. My gosh. What I know that is when I walk into a room, I come with my light first. That's why I know I can't lose. Because if 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 I'm not stepping correct in my life, my light is dimmed. And if I'm dimming my light, I am not serving my deepest purpose. I need to serve my deepest purpose. So whether I feel like crap or what I feel amazing, I'm giving my light. I have to. There's no other way around it. It's not about this life isn't for me and about me. This is this life is about how I can service those I surround myself with and I'm blessed to be around. Right. Mm-hmm. And I pour into that with with that intention. Uh, I got this this uh, thing called the five minute journal that like, every single day you know, I write down what I'm grateful for, for the three things I'm grateful for, the three things that will make the day great. You know, um, affirmations, the, the four affirmations that I constantly um, what you call it, say to myself, I am light, I am love, I am kind, I can do anything, right? And I sit with those words, I feel those words, believe them through my body, and then lo and behold, my day is way easier than it could have possibly been if I did not do that. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I love that you speak to that. And, you know, you and I have talked many times offline, right, over the years, how important, you know, so many times, and I've heard it all. People say, Christine, I just want to know how to book more. What's she doing to book more? Like, well, my mind said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, tell me about the, no, but my mindset had to, yeah, okay. So I love even hearing you bring that back up. So how important has having a, a, a mindset, a positive mindset, doing your inner work been to the, the growth in your career? Let's say in just in the past five or six years. Mm. What, had, would... what had to shift in you? Mm. I had to let go of the supposed to be, right? What I'm supposed to be doing at this point in my life, what I'm supposed to be doing in regards to where my career is or where it isn't, you know, where I, I, which, where I should be, letting go of all of that, being okay with where I am, but putting the little baby steps of work in every single day, because I'm about this game, right? And however I evolve into it, that's exactly what's supposed to happen, but it's not going to be by accident. It's not going to be some random thing. No, this is this is through intention. I landed somewhere that I was trying to go here, but I landed there. This is still closer to, to my dreams than where I was before. Cool. Bang. And surrender to that process, surrendering to the process. It, it keeps me going. Like, I need to fail now. I know this. Need to fail now. The pain of failure make space for the things that I want to create now. Cause now, okay, cool. That didn't work. All right, let me pivot. All right, let me pivot. All right, let me pivot. Let me pivot. I don't care about booking anymore. I just, I can't get my present in what I'm trying to do. You know what I mean? What's meant for you won't miss you. Your time is coming, but do you really want it? What are you doing this for? Mm -hmm. I can do this forever. I will. For as long as my body and brain can work, I'm going to You know what I'm saying? (laughs) And I love how you talk about like, the and you know I'm I'm always the advocate of book the room. We're booking yeah. back, right? Book the room, right? And <laughs> even your story, share quickly. You know when you booked Ruthless, Mr. Perry said something to you when you booked this because you had had auditioned not a couple, not one or two times for things <laughs> before. Yeah, like talk a little bit about that because people we can get so caught up in oh, why do they keep calling me in? I haven't booked. Oh, what's the point? And I'm like, don't let that part. You can't let your performance go down. I didn't book Snowfall till season four. I auditioned every season, even multiple wow. times in season four. Wow. Come on. Wow. Yeah. It's, if you keep coming, they keep bringing you back. First of all, that's an affirmation. That's, that's confirmation. You're doing something right. Right. Placement is like, it's the more specific you get about what you want to do. The, the harder it is going to be for you to, land jobs because when you when you play <clears throat> when you are right, you when you play your strengths you're putting yourself in a very specific lane right but no one can play that lane like you so your strengths is going to get you hired the fastest especially in the world of tv mm-hmm. the world of stereotypes you know the worry of the world of how you're seen is how you are going to show up on television you got to play that game 
So if you're in your lane, the thing you do effortlessly is going to be the thing that gets you paid the fastest. But what you do effortlessly may not be available in every single show or in every single episode of every series, right? But if you can see yourself being on a show, you reverse engineer that thing and eventually you will land on it or land somewhere close. With Ruthless, I did, I auditioned for that role twice, right? I sent in, I was going through so many things at that point in time. And the first thing I sent in, I apologized to my agent. I was like, this is not my best work. I'm going, you know, life is kicking my behind right now. He was like, shut up. I'm going to send this in and you're going to come in and we're going to do this over. Because <laughs> this isn't who you are. This isn't, he He fought for me to come fight. Come on, team. Fight. Come on, team. Hey, that's what I'm saying. I was like, once again, believe in me and, and show me who I am when I don't believe in myself. That's been happening to me my entire career. I'm like, who am I not to just pour myself into this person's belief in me? Let's go. Did it again. The best audition I ever had to this day. Oh my gosh, I, I didn't recognize myself. And then four days later, I'm flying out to freaking Atlanta to shoot the show. I'm like, are you, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. what? Mm. But don't worry about booking all the time. Don't worry about who else is doing what. Don't worry about anyone else's story but yours. Like you cannot look at someone with hungry eyes. Look yeah. at someone, you know, curious eyes. Your curiosity will keep that. you free. Ooh, oh, I love that. That's so <laughs> juicy. Oh, that's juicy. Oh, someone. That's good. I'm splitting. I'm chewing on that right now. Let's have this. Let's have this whole. Everybody I've talked to, like y'all, like every. Ugh. Mm, thank you. That was good. You know. You, you're extremely focused and driven. You've been doing this for a long time and you just stay in the work. But, you know, the, the reality of this industry, you know, I never put anything on anybody. Like, But the reality is this industry just is uncertain. It just is always like this. That's what makes it exciting. That's what makes it frustrating, right? So there's going to be ebbs and flows, right? So that adrenaline hit we get when we're, oh, drop everything and get on the plane. Yeah, sure. But that also can cause stress and all, all the other things. Yeah. Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, The Booking Magnet. I am so excited to invite you to our next event. It is called Booking Magnet Live. It's happening in Atlanta, Georgia on July 15th and 16th, 2022. You're gonna spend two days surrounded with actors oh, just like you. Actors who want more, actors who are looking for a safe space, a sanctuary, a safe haven to express themselves, to learn, to grow, and to connect. So I'm excited for you to experience that. Make sure you join us July 15th and 16th. You can click the link below, and I'm so excited to see you there. So how have you, you know, dealt with the ebb and flow of the industry over the years, you know, let's, I, you know, when you're, when the work is slow, when it's quiet, when there's close calls, it's down to you and someone else and, and you get the release. It's us. It went to someone else, even though intellectually you understand how do you deal mm. with that? What does that look like? It's been changing uh, for the past few years, but the most consistent thing is meditation. I go back to grace. I go back to gratitude. I have to. Like, just a few years ago, I was making enough money in New York to be broke. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm. I don't. I'm not worried about any of my finances. So much to the point where I'm starting a production company, and I'm. I'm using my own capital to make projects to bring people who won't have opportunities like I do to do do things that they love. Like, what? If you told me five years ago, this is what I'd be doing, I'd have laughed at you. Like, we said, hey, me, son, are you serious? But now I'm like, now I see me more and more. That's the other thing about this game. The more you pour into it, the more you will see yourself, whether that's good or bad. But you have to make peace with whatever that is. And if you really are about this game, there's, you, can't, you can get a billion no's and you're still going to go for it. You have to. That relentlessness, that that tenacity you need to it's almost like obsessing over it to the point of making it happen like it, that's the kind of energy it takes to have some kind of success in this game you can't deviate from plan a you can't like ever 
you can do things that help plan A, but everything has to help the first plan. Everything has to help that. When I feel my most lost, if you know, if I'm not having great conversations with my friends and family, I sit with myself and I literally just meditate and and try to have gratitude for all that I've somehow created and amassed over this 17 year career that I've been, you know, I've been up to. Right. It's yeah. If all else fails, gratitude saves, you know? Yeah. Cause it's easy for people to feel, you know, especially when it, you know, there's times where you may have consecutive notes back to back. Even when you feel like you're putting out some of your best work and it can be, it's one of those moments of what's, you know, I know y'all say it, what's yeah. wrong with me? Maybe yeah. I should just, maybe this is, who am I kidding? Maybe this isn't just for me because you're, you're looking at, at people, like you said, with hungry eyes, it's compare and despair. So, yeah. you know, for a moment before I let you go, when you think about, I want you to, for a moment, think about the seasoned actor, like you maybe, who's just hit a plateau, it's just gotten mm-hmm. so quiet and they're feeling like, maybe this is a sign to just give it up. Mm. Or I want you to, and I want you to think about that new, that brand new being who I like to call, who's starting, <laughs> can't feel like they're, they're just not getting the breakthrough and they feel maybe just lost and are also wondering, Maybe I'm kidding myself. Mm. What would you just say just to, if they could just hear this, just to go another day, go another week, just what words of love or advice can you give those people? Hire yourself. Tell the story you want to hear. Like you're going to, you know, I had 65 auditions last year. I didn't book one. Right. And I'm on a show. Like, and I'm, and I have that. So that's a new monster I'm dealing with. I'm in another tier now, right? So I've had close calls, but I, first of all, I never had that many opportunities in my life. Come through. Right. And you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a, an achievement in of itself. Like, what? 65, son? You had a year before. You had five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Come on, so champagne, fun. champagne problems. Champagne problems. <laughs> but boom. I'm thinking to myself, like, is it me? Is it me? You know, all those things coming through my head. But I'm like, no, 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 no. Look what you did. Look at your work on this other show. I have every single scene that I've done so far on that show. And I rewatch my work. I know some actors don't like to watch themselves. Oh, I love to study my work. Listen, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like Kobe. I'm going to see right, mm-hmm. this. Is I should have, well, boom, I should have pumped fake here. But they right. always watch the tape, watch the tape. Now I'm writing. Now I'm directing, now I'm producing. I'm hiring myself and others. That's how I keep myself afloat. I'm like, either y'all gonna let me in now or you're gonna be mad at yourself that you didn't let me in then. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm coming through, right? I may not be on your project or your project. And <laughs> it might be my project that you're buying from me. You know oh. what I'm saying? One oh way or another, you gonna get used to this phase. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> so, if you're failing good, you're in the right space. Mm-hmm. Go through that pain, feel that pain, and come back for more, come back for more, come back for more. If you really are about this, there's nothing else you can do. It's that, it's that serious. So dust yourself off, go again, and if they keep telling you no, hire yourself, hire mm-hmm. yourself. Oh my goodness. And then... Yeah. <laughs> Watch what happens. <laughs> it's a whole word. It's a whole word. And the energy shifts also. Yes. When you like, when I when I sit up in in this office and start uh-huh. making writing and making TikTok to do got my you Lenny, you know I stay busy. I got many yes, things to do. <laughs> and then I'd be like, oh, oh, and I did, oh, an offer. Oh. oh, okay. Like it's because it's I like it just comes at you. Yes. Because I'm not. I can't wait for you to give me permission to do what God has gifted me. Mm. It's my, yes. God gave me this gift, <laughs> many other gifts. So, so for if you're sitting at home and watching this and the only way you're practicing is when you get an audition mm. that we got to shift. Yeah. All of that. Yes. Because also, how are you preparing for that? What you are praying for. Exactly. Because yeah. listen, and don't don't get on no Tyler Perry show. And not nah, be prepared. 
<laughs> so, so I'm like, what do you want? I wish I had how many? That's why I was some, some of my audience and Hollywood bound actors. Well, how many auditions do you wish you had a week? I, I wish I had like six. Well, are you taping six times a week now? Mm. Uh, mm. Cause, Cause what I know happens, cause I see it all the time is you start to get what you ask for. And then I see it in the, in the chat and Instagram. Overwhelmed. It's, right, I'm, overwhelmed, I'm, freaking I'm, out. I'm, After the third <laughs> one, you you struggling. Now I thought you said you wanted six. Yeah, that's you what you said you wanted. That's what you said you wanted. That's what you said you wanted. That's what you listen. said you wanted. <laughs> cause you need to work all the muscles, the muscles of the <clears throat> camera, the muscles of memorization, the muscles of editing, the muscles of doing multiple takes. Cause listen, y'all heard when we started, Lenny shot 22 episodes in Eight or eight. nine, eight, eight days. So if you don't have that muscle already worked, it's not going to magically show up when you get to set. <laughs> not. We were doing 130 pages a day. Woo! 30 pages on average. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Impossible stuff. Madness. 40 to 50 were mine every day. Every day. Every you know day. <laughs> So if you're not working the muscle, how are you going to step into that? And I know a lot of my audience, I know there's a huge chunk of my audience who desire to work with Mr. Perry. So I, you're hearing it out of the mouth of babes, okay? <laughs> I just wanna, I'm going to leave that there. That's y'all. <laughs> I don't want to hear nothing else. So if you, <laughs> wait, 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 no. I'm serious. If you're not taping every day, because yeah. call, put out what you want to get back. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you're in motion, doing the things when things fall in your lap what you gonna do you you gotta try you gotta you gotta pace going okay cool all right cool just add that to my flow that's add what that I'm to my boom because you're already flowing you, you have time to be like oh man how am i gonna do this no you're going you're going you can't say how am i gonna do this no I'm, let me let me figure this out it up it up it up it's just flow 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 you have to before have to. i go last thing what and this just came up for me because i feel like you have you you're so open to to information. What would you say is some of the best, the best piece of advice or nugget you've received just about life hmm. that's that you still operate from this day? Is there something that that comes up for you? As crazy as things are and will always be, this is still your playground. Go have fun. Go nuts. Go have fun. Fun is is you know reckless abandon but also tireless focus and hard work but you it is up to you to go have fun this is your life you have to get it you have to do all the things you have to it's up to you completely granted yes you have whatever circumstance that keeps you from doing xyz but you can dance around the rules until you make it work for yourself there's there's wiggle room you just got to find that little spot all you just uh, all you need is a little a little just a little opening and the second you get that you better bust that door open and fly but yeah. have fun have fun it's gonna be hard but it doesn't have to be difficult have fun oh, yeah man. oh so good lenny <laughs> lenny d thomas thank you hey, Dude, this is pleasure. so juicy y'all if you have enjoyed this make sure you tag lenny all his links and bio will be in the show notes for this episode if you miss any other episode of book magnet magic oh get your life and just enjoy this series as we as we gear up to the booking magnet live conference this summer lenny thank you so much rest recharge rejuvenate have fun yes. go eat drink well <laughs> meditate keep your skin hydrated mind your business yes yes, yes indeed. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for watching bye all right